This is the Hot Rod Kid Podcast, hosted by me, Noah Norwood. And produced by me, Garrison Foster. My guest today was somebody I first met uh, when we hosted our annual Hot Rod Party. He came over with a super bitchin' Model A Coupe, and uh, since then we've talked more and become friends and work on stuff together. Please welcome Travis Squires. Yeah. And like if I'll be like I be like people will come over and like when I'm putting a motor together and it's mm-hmm. like I'll just lock my door. Oh yeah. Or I'll just won't answer my phone or yeah. I'll just stop. Yeah. I mean that is like so easy to forget. Well, and that's what like, people take. I've had people take it the wrong way. It's like, oh, don't yeah, take people, it the wrong way. people will just, do that. Oh, did I zip tie you in there? No, like, people will do that to me too, where like they think I'm mad at them. And it's just like, no, it's just like when I'm focused on and you know, Rod Emery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I heard him talking about that. And this was like before I really started like getting focused on projects. He was talking about how he doesn't allow people to come over to his shop during the work days. And I was kind of thinking like, well, you know, like why not have visitors? But now I totally get it. Mm-hmm. Cause when I'm working on something, like the last thing I want is somebody to come like after I'm done and I'm like, feel accomplished, like sure, come over, have a beer and we'll hang out. Mm-hmm. But yeah. while I'm working, I'm like, I'm not going to get anything done. Hmm. Are we recording right now? Yeah, okay. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It is hard to get. It's like, I all make stupid mistakes. I don't know if it's just the lack of focus that I'm, yeah. not, you know, cause people like, I didn't notice it until like I started having shop nights and stuff or having things at my shop. Like you feel like a host. Right. Right. I mean, right. Like I remember when I came over here, you're like, you got, you know, you need something to drink. You need, right. you need the foods over there. And you just, you just, it's just a yeah. And there's like three or four of you guys doing that. Yeah. I mean, it's like a big, you know, right. a big deal. But you know, even if you have a couple people over, you know, it's kind of like that. And, well, uh, and especially when like I have somebody come over that hasn't been over very often, I want to show them around the place, you know, and, and I have a lot of stuff on the walls that there's questions about, like, hey, you know, what's this one? And tell the story about it. So it's mm-hmm. hard for me to just be like, I'd feel like kind of mean if I was just like, yeah, come on in and just ignored you and just started working on something, you know? Mm-hmm. So it'd be hard. Yeah. Yeah. And the other, like, the other thing is, like, just, I'm so, like, anal about Mm -hmm. like everything in my shop like you know like if it doesn't get put back in the right spot me too yep so i mean it it makes it hard to to you know have i mean i guess the great idea would be to have like 10 people all working on one car yeah and every single person knowing what you're doing because see that's the other problem you've got this project right and people want to help well if they don't know what you're what you really what you're doing it's hard for them to help and then like i always find that i spend more time um keeping trying to find jobs for people yeah like during a shop night. yeah you can do this and you can do that and then it just turns into yeah a when shop you can, when you can into, find something to where it turns into more of a crew type of deal then that's when it's really cool where where everybody's just doing their own thing working around each other you know and everybody knows what they need to do next and they all have their own jobs and it's just like getting it done that's when it can be really fun like the, yeah. the best the best uh, group shop night activity that, that that there is is wet sanding. Yeah. Yep. You can get like ten mm-hmm. people as long as they don't leave. You and, know. You, and you can bullshit while you're doing it. Yeah. You know, you can just sit there and talk and you know, yeah. As long as they kind of know, like they don't rub their fingers in there and leave finger right. And, right. You know, I like that's about the only. Or <laughs> sitting there cutting all the way through your, you know, your coat. You know. <laughs> so I'm helping this guy. He was doing like a doing a Model A chassis and stuff. And it, it's pretty cool because I can be like, okay, there's a piece of three sixteenths, go cut that. Like stuff that, like I normally like. I don't want to call it grunt work, mm-hmm. but he's more than happy to do it. Yeah, and it's kind of cool because I can be like, oh, go do that, and then I go play with the radio, get on my phone. You done? Okay, cool. You know, and that that's kind of cool. So I right. guess what I'm saying is, if you got just somebody that you're working with on a project and helping them like that, then. Mm-hmm. But yeah, most of the time in the shop, it's yeah. Well, I've been seeing you've been getting a lot of work done recently. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I got yeah. I I'm really good at getting progress done because I get I I do get burned out on stuff. So when I got my coupe going, mm-hmm. it was when I first got it driving, it wasn't the way I wanted it. It wasn't right. chopped. It and, never is. Yeah. But I had to get it driving that summer because I knew that if I worked all that winter. And then worked a whole nother summer on it and didn't have it on the road that I'd get burned out. 
Right. So like, and I didn't know how therapeutic that that, that would really be mm-hmm. and is because there was stuff I didn't like about it. I wasn't happy about while I was driving. It. And that's, that's but way once easier. I, yeah. Once I left the driveway, all that, all that stuff went away. Right. I didn't care. Right. Well, like, and all that stuff I was worried about, nobody ever noticed anyway. <clears throat> I and, totally get that. Yeah. And, and then, and then like yeah. this winter, you know, in the winter before last, I chopped it. Right. You know, so I'm always trying to. And it, it works better when you're tinkering on a running project than oh. when you're just sitting there and working on something. Cause that's how I felt with my roadster. You know, it's just like, Oh yeah. It feels like I'm never going to get done with that thing. But then my F 100, I got that and I got it running as soon as I got it. And it was not perfect at all. They had a lot of issues with it and it wasn't at all the way I wanted it, but I could at least drive it. You know, that's just it, yeah. man. How much fun, Yeah. more fun is it to go get parts in that? Mm-hmm. Right? Exactly. You know what yeah. I mean? Or like, like that 32 cab I'm working on, I went and picked it up from the sand blaster from there. And yeah. that's my little run around truck. That's kind of you know? what, my, what my F 100 is. It's like, you know, it's got a heater wipers in it. Yep. Windows go up and down. I could drive it. Yep. It's not so nice. I can't drive it in the rain. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I just drive, you know, which surprises people. Like, oh, you drive it out in the rain. Like, yeah. Yeah. I see, got to. Because. Mine is like, I'll go pick up steel in it, you know? Oh, yeah. And they'll be like, you're getting steel in this truck? I was like, yeah. This is my work truck, man. It's, it's like, so like we were, uh, when we were headed down to San Francisco last month, I had my kid with me and like, we'd be at a rest stop in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. So people would be lucky to be in my kid and they're like, they're in a town for like a hundred miles. Where are you guys from? Like, yeah. You're actually driving that truck? Yeah. Like what they what they do in the fifties? Uh-huh. What they did exactly, you know, exactly. It's not it's not as uh, practical, but it it like it's a good experience mm-hmm. to have, you know. Yeah. To take something on a trip like that, because I I drove my truck the furthest I've driven it was I went up to Tacoma with it, you know, oh, yeah. and people were surprised. They're like, "Dang, you drove that thing all the way up here?" And it's like once you get on the highway, it's really not that bad, you mm-hmm. know. But it's a lot more of a enjoyable experience, and it's a totally different experience than just driving a modern car you know it's easy that it's, way it, it was like it was weird when i was in california like a lot of people were just like we stopped at the various rest stops you know whatever and people that were like in a minivan that mm-hmm. knew nothing about classic cars didn't really it just wasn't their thing they like appreciated it yeah you know they're like yeah. wow that is really neat oh wow this whole you know so that was pretty cool but you're right you've got to have I always tell people, get get it on the road. Whatever you got, get it on the road. Don't care what, worrying about what people are going to say mm-hmm. or what they're going to do or think, mm-hmm. is get it on the road and, yep. and get get it out and get and drive it. You know? Yeah, I've definitely been guilty of that where I think, you know, like, oh, people are going to notice this and people are going to oh, notice yeah. that. And it's like, oh, yeah. and, and the, the example that I kind of tell myself is like, when I go and I look at somebody else's car, even if it's kind of like a, you know, a little bit rattier, kind of clapped out car, I think it's just the coolest thing ever. And I'm like, dude, this thing is like perfect. You know, this is so cool. But then when I look at my own truck, I'm like, oh my God, (laughs) all these imperfections, everybody's just going to be like, who's this kid coming in here? You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. I think that holds, that holds a lot of people back. I think Mm -hmm. is because they're worried about, you know, this or that or, but, uh, there's so many stages of building a car. Yeah. There's the ups and the downs. And I tell people, I was like, it's amazing. It's such a love hate, right? You know, you can be so happy and then, you know, yeah, something can go wrong and you just gotta, it, it, it really is hard to people that, that like see the progress growing, right? They're not seeing you screw up a piece of metal or warp yeah, something, exactly. you know, right? You're exactly. not like, Hey, check this out. I just yeah. warped this piece of, and I can't shrink it now, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? they don't yeah. see that, you know, so that it, a lot of people just won't even start. Right. You know, right. And I was just talking to my wife today, like how, how hard it is to get a car nowadays because everything is so expensive. It's super expensive. I mean, yeah. You're talking like, like a, like I was looking at a coupe that was like, I seen it on, Craigslist or whatever, sixty five hundred bucks, mm-hmm. right? And my coupe was pretty bad, mm-hmm. right? So I know, like, by looking at that one for sixty five hundred, it's got, you know, the the expensive stuff, no sub rails, right? I mean, that's expensive and it's hard to build, stuff like that. It's like they're going to be doomed from the beginning, <laughs> right? Man. I mean, they're right. going to get that and just be like, you know, and then you're going to see it on Craigslist or Marketplace. It's a halfway done project, halfway, yeah. you know, brand new Super Bell axle. They just, I mean, threw a ton of money into mm-hmm. this. And it's just like, I yeah. And know. see, it, that's the thing about metal work is it's fun when you can be customizing stuff. You know, that's the fun part. But the tedious part, the part that will burn you out, is just doing rust repair. 
because you're like, when is this ever going to stop? You know, one little, one little section is all right. Cause you get all happy. You know, you built a piece to, you know, fit right. And then you blend it all in and nobody can tell. But then you get to a point where you're like, Oh my God, <laughs> when is this ever going to stop? Yeah. See the mechanical part was always what came easy to me. Mm-hmm. It was the metal work. That, right. that I struggle and I still struggle with. Like I was talking to Matt about it and Matt was like, we're talking about, you know, the TIG, mm-hmm. right? Not getting any foreign heart, not putting anything in there that's harder than what we're working with. Right. That way you can put a TIG in there with some light filler, yeah. still move stuff around. And, and I'm just asking him all these questions like this, that, cause like just, I have so much respect for somebody that could do a door skin. Oh, right? seriously. Like, yeah. You know, like, I watch Bobby Walden, and I'm yeah. just like, oh, I just want to turn it off. I'm like, yeah. Dude, or when really? he does the roof inserts. Yeah. It's just, it's just, and, that, and what, that is... what I've told people is, is it's the subtle curves like that. The ones where when you look at a car, you don't even really notice it. Unless you're a metal guy who does sheet metal, then you definitely notice it. But it's those slight curves, you know, to, to take a, a piece of metal and just do a wicked curve on there and, like, get some major shape and build, like, a custom fender or something. That's, like, it takes skill, but it's, like... I feel it's the matching, the slight curves, you know, and the, the oh, door skins, yeah. you know, those slight radiuses. Those are the ones that get you. Yeah. And the ones that I've been dealing with that I've been struggling with the most is the, the tipping an edge. That's a radius. Those oh. are fun. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you can start when you start moving here, you know, you start, I thought what would happen to me is I'd move it here You're right. you know, where I wanted to move it, but I wouldn't pay attention to right. where else. It, it, it you know counteract yep. you know we got this frame this model a frame we're you know straightening out and it was it had some it was the bad thing about it was the rails were twisted oh, right okay. so you know I had a little bit of this you know and you can pull it out but you know so we'd pull it out here and relieve it you mm-hmm. know and then it relax here and there and everything and i mean that just you know like the mechanical stuff like setting caster you know i mean yeah i mean that's i love that i do too yeah. i think it takes way more skill like when i look at chopped cars door skins anything with a long panel right in the you know three feet of weld right without warping that thing yeah. just the patience that that yeah, takes exactly you know i mean like you know even if you're you know putting a piece of brass or something to absorb heat behind it or something right just, just the i mean because like I, I did door skins on my coupe and i'm like okay i'm gonna take my time mm-hmm. i'm gonna do this right you know and man, I'd look and it would start, you know, the ridges start coming up and yep. I couldn't hammer the welds down because I couldn't get, cause there was door structure in there. Yeah. Cause I, man, I got all the respect in the world for metal, metal guys. and paint guys. Seriously. Paint yeah. body guys. I have a man, lot of I, respect I see for cars paint guys. Yeah. People get cars like straight, nice black paint. It's just straight as can be. I'm like, Pff. I know. My hat's off. I know. Me, well, man. the two parts of that, the metal guys who get it super, super straight. And then the filler guys, who even though they're just putting a light skim coat in there, that just spend hours and hours just sanding it and just getting it just like glass, you it's know. It's like, like there's so much. Like I think like like when you see like somebody doing a doing a car and they've got it down to bare metal. If you've never taken a car down to bare metal, I mean I'm not talking sandblast. I'm talking but like bare metal. Yeah. Like you know, that's so much work. Yeah. Oh, you mean like sanding it down to bare metal? Oh, yeah. Oh, I've done that before. Yeah. And then and then you start to get to the point where you're like, maybe I don't need to do totally bare metal. You know? Yeah. I've, I've had body guys go, <laughs> you just removed some really good body work. Yeah. So yeah. There. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. That's why I get all my stuff sandblasted. Because it's not, it's the little nooks and crannies oh, that get yeah. me. Oh, yeah. Like the inside yeah. of frame rails. There's yeah. no way it's you like, can get, get it. out of here. I'd be taking too much time. And so what I do is I, I'll get a body back from the sandblaster. And then I usually DA the outside because mm-hmm. sandblasters will leave that rough finish, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'll DA the outside. But then, you know, for the inside or little nooks and crannies, if it's a little rough patch, it's still bare metal. So I'm like, it's all right, you know. Yeah, you're better off to just load up and just do it. Mm-hmm. Just get before you even start doing anything. Yep. Like I've gotten to a point now to where I throw everything I weld goes in the blast cabinet. Like mm-hmm. I was doing these uh, tubular shock links mm-hmm. for the hydraulic shocks on the back, and just everything. Just you know, I could grind it off, but yep. again, I don't like I don't like etching the metal with something like carborandum. Like I'll right. use like forty, sometimes forty, but most of the time it's like a worn out eighty grit. You yeah, know, that's smooth, and I'll just you know because there's no plus when you go to paint it. Right. Right. It's going to you know, yep. stick better. And there's lots of little 
See, and I've Page, gotten things you got to do to be patient that yeah. are going to pay off so much in the long run. I've gotten so much more particular now that I've started TIG welding, especially, you know, like I will, before I weld anything, you know, I grind it all down. I usually use like a Scotch Bright pad, you know, so mm -hmm. Scotch Bright it all down so everything's bare metal. Mm -hmm. And then I take acetone and yeah. wipe down both pieces of metal that I'm working with. And then I wipe down my filler rod, you know. And then get everything all fitted up, you know, because because like you got to imagine when you're welding something that has rust or a little bit of paint on it or even just oily residue from, you know, you grabbing it. Mm -hmm. That's all once the metal melts, that's all going directly into your weld, Oh yeah. you know, and so yeah. that's no good. That's why you got to do the make sure your metal's totally bare and you got the acetone wipe for Especially sure. Especially with aluminum. Mm -hmm. Like we we were uh, doing some aluminum that was powder coated and I was having trouble. I mean, I was hitting it with 80 grit and, and spraying it with acetone, trying to get it clean, you know, good, you know, clean filler, everything. And I was, um, new nozzles and new tip, like fresh, like, cause I used to just regrind it, my tungsten. Right. And this guy told me, he's like, just snap it off. He goes, I know they're like five or six bucks yeah. a piece. He goes, just snap them, mm -hmm. snap them off. And what it was, we couldn't get a good weld. What it was is when they were powder coating, when they were hooking the ground up, it was pulling all the contaminants of the room. Into the pores. It was yeah. actually, yes, exactly. And, and you know, because I took it to a guy. I'm like, hey, I'm having trouble getting a good, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't keep a good puddle. It would just, you know, it was like, you know, like it was dirty. It would just, mm -hmm. You know, like a good puddle stays you liquidy. Can, yeah, you can see and, when, when you have little floaters in your puddle. You yeah. know, and you're like, oh, that's, I mean, yeah, you know, like usually you can get the puddle going and then you can actually start pushing it right. just ever so right. slightly. And, uh, you know, so like you said, cleanliness, man, mm -hmm. it's so, so critical. Like you can, you can take a MIG, right. And just turn the heat up, and just, <laughs> yeah. you know, you can, you can fake it a lot, but yeah, but somebody sent me this thing. It said, uh, it was a really good looking MIG weld. Mm hmm. But then it just broke. There's like right. no penetration at all. Right. That's the thing yep. with a MIG weld is you can't really watch the two pieces melt together. Exactly. Like yeah, because you have so much filler rod just coming at you. It's so easy to just – it's like taking a piece of bubble gum and just sticking it on there. Yeah. You know, and it looks good, but it's like you don't know how much penetration you got. Whereas TIG, you know, you can really you can really you can melt the metal and then happen. just you control how much filler goes into that, you know. Yeah, that and, and – uh, Doing the small, precise welds. Yeah. Like, I've just, like, I, I, I started playing around with my TIG. Like, I struggled. Mm -hmm. Like, struggled. And I thought, I mean, I knew what I needed to do. Like, I knew how clean yep. it needed to be, right? And then when Matt was over, I was bugging him about how to get a puddle started. Because I would just hold it here. He goes, just give it a little circle. Mm -hmm. Kind of heat up around it, you know, and then... You know, I had my angle wrong a little bit. But even though I see, knew that's, what I... That's something that I struggled do. with, too, because I had a wicked angle going on there. And then once somebody told me, like, pretty, almost do it, you know, like mm -hmm. 90 degrees, but just give you just enough to where you can see what you're doing. That's all you need is just enough to where you can kind of peek in there. For the most part, though, you need to be almost straight up and down. And when I did that, that changed my life. I was like, geez. So what do you think about, like... Uh when you're doing your, of course, when you're MIG welding, right, uh -huh. this hand, you know, whatever hand is yeah. just resting it, right. right? How do, how are you doing with like, have you thought about going left-handed with your filler? I Even I, though you'd hold the torch with the other hand? So I, I'm right-handed, so uh -huh. I usually hold, hold the torch with my right hand and do, fill with my left hand. So you're saying switch and See, I was torch with the yeah, left hand? I was, I was asking Matt about that. I go, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm having a hard time being consistent with my filler. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you know, I've actually worked with guys that I'll actually have them switch. So they're they're right-handed, but they torch with and the left. And they'll hold yeah. the torch with this hand. And that hand, makes sense and they'll because... Just, and they'll just get that angle there, and they'll yeah. just hold it. And then, yeah. Because like, most do of the work is with your filler. And that's what I struggle with the most is, like, is like I can get... Because I have a kind of a shake, too. So I can get, you know, a pretty consistent line of filler. And then the biggest one is when it's time to feed more in. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah. Worst thing for me is wearing a glove that's small enough mm -hmm. that I can that I can hold everything in mm -hmm. and then the heat, yep. you know, cause you know, it gets hotter. Yep. Son of a bitch, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and Matt was talking about, and I've heard a couple of the guys I've talked to just feed it with their hand. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Right. My hand just goes in there. Yeah. Right? And then, yeah. I, then yeah. I stop, you know, and then it's like, you know, and then I realize I got that much left. <laughs> That's exactly what I do. But, uh, I think it's, it's something I'm cause I can, it, it's weird because like I can silver solder, I can gas weld, but 
the TIG. It's, See, it's my struggle. I've actually movie. found gas or I gas welded a lot in high school. And I mean, as far as the wire feeding went, it's about the same. But as far as uh, a gas torch versus a TIG torch, TIG torch all day because it's just so much more ergonomical for me, you know. And I got really used to gas welding, but it's nice for me with the TIG torch. I can really choke up close mm-hmm. to where the tungsten's coming out, and I feel like I have way more control. I think the easiest, the thing that's easier for me, gas welding, is like anytime you're heating something, something up, you've got. It's easier to me for me to control the heat by pulling back. Right. Because versus like when I getting st- off the pedal. Yeah. Yeah. Versus getting off the pedal. Because I'll do that. I'll forget. Like I'll and start. You, yeah. Right. And I'll burn it, and then I'll just leave it there. Mm-hmm. And then I can't feed it fast enough, and yeah. then my weld gets wide, and the puddle gets. That definitely is a learning curve to kind of practice that it's such a balancing act of three things how much filler you're putting in there how fast you're moving and how much pedal you have you know it's like better about backing off the pedal like yeah. getting the puddle and then back and, and then i realized that i'll go full pedal mm-hmm. to get it to get it going and then i'll find out that that i've got it up to almost all the way off yeah you know i mean my heels that, up. that's what I, I i have my my uh amperage on my pedal cranked pretty high so I have a lot more sensitive pedal. And then that's what I end up experiencing too is when I'm really cruising along with a weld, I'm almost all the way off. Because once you get that pedal started, it's just, you know, barely cruising along. Yeah, and I've been playing like a, like, I think a lot of people, if they're having trouble doing filler, that, that maybe they can go to a higher amperage, bigger filler, mm-hmm. bigger, bigger, you know, bigger tungsten. Right. Um, because I think that that, that make up, makes up for certain, yeah. you know, uh, habits people will yeah. get. Because, like, when I first started doing it, it was like, okay, my main thing is, is I don't want to learn the bad habits right off the get, like I did with MIG. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I I never cut my wire to right. start with. I mean, you know, and I, like, I, my, you know, my adjustments on my welder are incorrect. Like, I'll still, like, open the side of my welder. And look, okay, what's that? What's that supposed to be? You know, and I, because I'll get it off. You know, I'll be like, I'll mm-hmm. do this, and then oh, it worked. I just, but trying not to establish those bad habits. When you, yeah, when you start something new, do it right. Yeah, because you know, I mean, MIG welding. I mean, you know, there's really not that much no nope. to it. You know, but when you get into everything. But, but else, what I've what I've started doing too is is like when I when I do decide that I'm going to MIG weld something, I'm like, all right, if I'm going to MIG weld it, I'm going to do it right. You know. I'm not just gonna slam bam this together. I'm gonna actually do it right and take my time. And then people yeah. are, people will be like, "Wow, your your MIG weld turned out really well." It's like, well, treat it like a TIG weld. Prep it out right. You know, oh, yeah. make sure you're all clean. Have everything set to go. Like, clean out your nozzle so you don't have <laughs> junk falling out of your nozzle into your weld. You know, no, clip no. the wire every time. Yeah. Yeah, they clean your nozzle out so it doesn't. You know, your gas isn't doing a tornado vortex. Yeah, coming out with exactly. All the beetleberries stuck in the side. Yeah. Like, like, I had all the bad habits. Like, I never knew what to set my bottle at pressure-wise, mm-hmm. right? I never paid attention. It came out, you know, made a kind of a clean weld. But it's like now, like we were talking earlier, you, you get a good weld going, man. And that's the best way to yeah. get the zone. Yeah, right? you're seriously. Zone. And, just, and that sound that it makes, too, oh, you know, man. when you're just, this just time cruising along. It's like, man, you know you're MIG welding good when it sounds just like bacon frying. Yeah. You know, and I'll and I'll always uh, you know little things like that you don't forget. You know, yep. like, God, bacon. You know, yeah, you don't somebody want it to will be... be over at my shop welding, and I'll be like, Ah, oh, it sounds just like bacon fried. Yeah, you don't want it to be like broken. No. You want it to be a nice solid just <laughs> that you just know, one cruises thing that along. I, that uh, I used to do is get my wire speed slow, right? Uh-huh. Like, oh, I'm burning this in because I got my wire speed slow. And sometimes I'll do that, or sometimes I'll turn my wire speed up if I'm blowing through. And I don't want to switch from AC to DC, you know, mm-hmm. I don't want to, you know, um, but like I said, I got to remember to, to get, go back, go back to a book, go back to the, to the settings and not think I know it all. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Not just, you know, like actually do it right because, you know, I mean, that's your weld, right? Yeah, exactly. That's like your, your name's on that. Exactly. You know, um, any, everything you do needs to be, and I, and I didn't used to be a perfectionist. My shop used to look like it was a mess. Like, like I said, floor dry, ATF all over the place. Mm-hmm. Could never find anything. I would spend hours looking for stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was that bad. But now it's like everything has to be in particular. Right. And everybody's got their own, yeah, their own way of doing stuff. But like, that's why 
that's why some some cars go down the road with no shimmy. Yeah. Right. You, you figure it out, read a lot. That's what I do. You know, I do yeah. a lot of reading, a lot of asking. You know. So when my girlfriend first saw the shop, it was at the hot rod party, which is actually where I first met you. And uh, she saw it. And then after that, she asked me, she said, so what does your shop normally look like? I'm like, like that. <laughs> it looks like that all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't just clean it to take an Instagram picture. It's like, I can just, it's always clean. Because I'd lose it if my shop wasn't clean. Oh, man. And, uh, like I was taking a, a Saginaw four-speed apart. And on the, on the reverse levers, there's a detent ball. And you can actually move it far enough. And there's a heavy spring underneath it. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that damn thing. Like, I kept making that mistake of opening it up right and it flew the across ball. the shop yeah. <laughs> so i'm on the i'm on the creeper with the light you know going along and you know like mm-hmm. i lost it three times and i found it every time yep is because you know my dad used to always say if you drop something you'll be able to find it mm-hmm. you know in my shop's almost gotten to the point now to where i don't know if it's ocd or what it is but like i've had this thing like i paint everything snap on red my grinder stand, step yeah. on red. See, I've my been thinking about doing the same thing. And then I got like this, uh, like I want to do this central vac setup mm-hmm. with PVC, right? So I can just, yeah. Cause I like to vacuum everything, right. you know? And, uh, yeah. so sometimes, you know, I get a little, see, a so little I, I made my board. plenishing hammer stand and I just went to Lowe's and just bought some, some spray paint and it ended up being this super cool charcoal gray. And then I'm like, oh, I gotta paint my English wheel that color now. Oh, what and, else can I paint? And, with yeah, and oh, yeah. just How make, much make everything. And, it, and it, <laughs> it, it ended up matching those benches that I got, kind of that gunmetal, like charcoal gray. And I'm like, now I gotta make everything this color. So I've definitely gotten that way as well. And the vacuuming thing, I've looked into getting some, like the little Milwaukee handheld vacuum, yeah. you know, because mm-hmm. that's so much better than just blowing air and even just sweeping. Oh, yeah. You know, you get that dust. Well, especially just flies when you fire up a vacuum, especially like a you know a shop vac. You got a lot of even with a good filter in it, you're still blowing right something around. Right, right? if it's coming in, it's got to come out. You know, and so it, I was looking at the same thing. Something mm-hmm. cordless, obviously. You know, you can just walk around with it you're not dragging this three inch you know knocking shit over yeah it, exactly you know, and, and the cords get entangled oh that's my other biggest pet peeve is when airlines that's why i started doing all drop downs because when oh, airlines yeah. and cords get tangled i'm like <sighs> oh yeah yeah but another thing that um i've been doing a lot lately is uh i got uh i'm a i like everything like i'll take a set of tools and i got these little Rubbermaid cart that I roll my tools around on, and I go right to the solvent tank. Mm-hmm. Right, every every two, especially if I'm doing going really greasy, you know, and uh, oh, everything gets done. And then I got this uh, oil spots on my floor mm-hmm. bugs me. Right, like when people come over to my house and like they're like, you know, they're older cars, so they got oil leaks. Right, yep. I'm mm-hmm. like, God, it just bugs me. I'm like, don't park in the park in the gravel. You can park in the gravel. Yeah. And I got this, uh, you know, I take carb cleaner. Right, yeah. The only way you can really clean it, you know. I tried purple power and all that stuff, but I want it. I want to fucking clean quick, right? So I got the Sure Shot pressurized canister that I buy my, you know, chlorinated brake clean and you know in bulk, mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. all over all my hands and knees. The other day I was doing it the other day. Oh god damn it, damn it! You know, and I got drip trays under everything. In fact, <laughs> yep. it's like a pain in the ass because my drip trays are like that tall. Yeah, and they got that much oil in them. You right? know what you should look it into? Up, you know, trying to. Walk. Uh, you should look into a uh, pig mat. So I've, you have some pig mat? I've heard about that. Yeah, so yeah. these rolls that I have under my doors, I don't have roll-up doors yet. Mm-hmm. So those sock things are to keep the water because, oh, my God, water will just roll in here during the rain. Mm. So I got these pig mat socks, but they also have pig mat, actual mats. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you could even put it, if you still have your drip tray, if you put it in the drip tray, you there know, you then it just absorbs yeah, the mat. Yeah, see, that's what I do. they're pretty affordable, too. Yeah, because right surprised. now I've got, like, something that's it's not nearly that efficient, but... Yeah, I throw it in there. It's yeah. just like, gosh, I mean, I'm tired of wiping these things down. Exactly. You know? Yep. And like, I'll leave, and like, my other pet peeve is I got like the blue paper towels in my shop. The shop ones. And yeah. somebody will go like this and then they'll throw it away. Mm-hmm. Right? I hate that. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, look, I got these cheap ass, whatever, well, whatever, when they just, it just says paper towels on it, right? It does, that's the, the well, especially now get. during these COVID times, the shop towels are like, I just went and got another tattoo the other day and I was talking to my tattoo artist, like, he uses like his two biggest thing he uses is shop towels and latex gloves and i'm like dude that's gotta <laughs> be hardest, <laughs> ridiculous yeah <laughs> that's the other thing is like i used to not i used to i'd do wheel bearings without gloves on yeah 
right? And now mm-hmm. it's like, oh man, I, you know, and uh, a buddy of mine got me into to wearing gloves. Right. You know, because like I said, I do, you know, I just go wash my hands and think, oh, it's just working on stuff. But now it's like, you know, I like to be able to take them off and have clean hands, you know, if I'm going to do something else. Or, yeah. But yeah, the biggest thing like we, is, is that blue shop towels. Like, again, like people coming over to your shop, you know, like when they leave, you know, all my buddies are going to hear this and be like, fuck, we're not going over to his shop. It's, like, it's, <laughs> I know. it's a big deal. I mean, it's, I know. it's like, I know. Well, know, this I mean, is, this is what goes through my head all the time. And the other one that gets me is like, like beer cans. When people oh, just yeah. leave beer, I'll just find beer cans. Just, I'm like, we got a can bag, dude. Like <laughs> put it in the can bag. I'm like, so going back to my OCD in my shop, I got like a rubber made can just for beer cans with a hole in the center. I That's exactly what I have yeah. right over there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, whole the, one. the only yeah. problem is, is like now that like we got that bottle drop thing where you can just fill up the green bag oh, thing. Yeah. So it's like, okay, that's a lot better. Because before it's like, God, what a pain. I was like, I don't realize how much cans of stuff I go through right. until like every two weeks, you know. But people, I got to say, people that come over to my shop are really good. Every time they leave, you need help cleaning anything and because yeah. a lot of these guys have shops so they know what it's like to mm-hmm. and see, have eight people over then you're like you know i actually enjoy cleaning my shop and i almost don't I like do i almost don't like help with it because i'm like i'm just gonna have to tell you where everything is and so if like somebody comes over and they like work on something we work on it together i'm really not even that offended i'll just yeah. like just go home dude i'll just do it you know yeah we were like work- turn the music yeah. on i'm just alone and just we were yeah. working on a on a model a last night and, uh, you know, he's like, hey, you need help? No. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you sure? No, no. Yeah. I, I know where everything's at because I want to be able to find it, you know. Like, I like I won't. Like, I'll be at some of these places and be like, I don't know where this wrench goes. Yeah, exactly. Then I'll tell them. I'm putting it right here because I don't right. know where it goes, you know. But I, most people, you know, are pretty good about it, you know. And I think a lot of, a lot of people that, that come over to my shop are, they're, you know, either we're working on something and they're, they're real appreciative to have the help or, you know, or. Or whatever, so that's pretty good. But yeah. I guess it goes back to like uh, parties, you know. Yeah. You're younger having parties, and you know, you you wake up the next morning and your whole, you know, your whole living room smells like the bo- you know bottle return of Fred Meyer. <laughs> yeah. <you know>? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like when we had our hot rod party. You know, I I spent months preparing. I mean, my not just me, my whole family did, and friends and everything. We spent months on getting the property ready and then like making sure the shop was all squared away and getting like displayed stuff set up, you know? And then it's just like, you have that one big day and then it's like, all right, now we're back to cleaning everything up again. I will say this though. I remember when I came over for that, I was like, I looked at Eddie, I go, dude, Besides a golf course, this is like the greenest grass. Oh, we spent we see that's like, we, we spent have started, like, months, three months on that. Ago yeah. watering, and I, I told my dad that because it was like we'd had it in August, right? And I told my dad at like the beginning of summer, kind of that like late springtime. I'm like, well, we need to start on this now. So we just watered the hell out oh, of it, man, and just it like yeah, we spent a lot of time. So on that. nice though to like sit out there by you know and just relax, yeah. sit in grass. Yeah, Remember, it was and hot, I, right? It was yeah, August, yeah, right? There was like, yeah. I mean, if it was my yard, it'd be like dust you know i mean you wouldn't be i mean it's nice to have a nice you know when you got people coming over right you know it's a it's, it's a big deal it's a lot of behind the scenes stuff yeah exactly and then and my biggest thing is like i mean now the property like during the winter time especially you know it's not quite as nice as when we have it mm-hmm. ready for the hot rod party but at the shop i want the shop to always just be like if somebody's gonna come over i'm not like oh i gotta clean it real quick you know i'm just like mm-hmm. yeah come on over yeah that we uh so like uh, they're like out by our area there's a lot of covered bridges and i always think it's for our area it's like okay i want to if i invite people over i want to have something for them to do and i think mm-hmm. the covered bridges is kind of like it's pretty our unique. cool yeah. little area like yeah. out here you guys got like all this wine country and all oh, yeah. I mean, it's so fun i love driving out here man yeah mm-hmm. smooth roads too right good yeah. model a roads I'd yeah say, you know <laughs> but like but the i was doing this thing where it was like coffee right like Cause I, I hate the fact that I can't go anywhere and get a goddamn coffee. Right. I go to Dutch Brothers. Dutch yep. Brothers coffee. You got, I'll take a coffee. Well, we don't have coffee. Yeah. So I'm thinking, where can we meet? Right. Mm-hmm. It'd be cool to have a place where. Because yeah, there's, there's not a lot of, there's not too many good cars and coffee places. Yeah. yeah. So I was yeah. like, well, I'll do my own. So I was like, oh yeah, you know, and this is like one of those have a couple beers, you know, get to plan and stuff. Oh yeah, I'll have the donuts, I'll have coffee ready, I'll mm-hmm. have all this stuff ready. And then um like the next morning I wake up 
Like, I'm like, I got to get up early. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of work that goes into that. But I think people really appreciate that. They do. Yeah. You know, I think people are like, because like I've had, I've talked to guys that plan stuff and they're like, you know, like they're unsure how it's going to turn out. And I go, there's just people waiting for someone to say, okay, we're going to go do this. Yeah. And and see, somebody that's, needs to that's do That's exactly that. what I experienced with my hot rod party. Cause when you came, that was the second year we did it. And so the first year I was like, you know, there's no like kind of like a hot rod, just chill, like, you know, yeah. grab some tacos and just like chill out like a barbecue, a hot rod yeah. barbecue. And the first year is just our friends. You know, we had like, I think we had like 30 people come over. And then the second year I was like, I really want this to be like, serious a bigger deal like mm-hmm. an actual event. like an ongoing like thing. an ongoing people look forward event. to yeah. it yeah and so we had people who shared it and then those people shared it and then those people shared it you know well, i think we, that's probably how i found out about yeah it. yeah because yeah. i i mean i never knew you before and that yeah. was the coolest thing is i'd say like half the people there i didn't even know so we we ended up having like over a hundred people that showed up and like overall because like cars would leave and come it was ended up like 50 cars mm. they came and i was like dang that was crazy and i know that next year is just going to be even bigger but people were very appreciative and mm-hmm. excited so i mean that's oh, yeah. even though it was you know we didn't make any money you, it's like you know, it's not what it's about somebody, we just had a blast somebody got up with their old lady that day they planned it five days before that yeah that they're going to go out to noah's place yep i mean yep mm-hmm. i mean that's a big deal. I mean, especially like like with the COVID thing. Yeah, because you know no, nobody like had we anything talking, going on. Like, yeah, dude, you always look for the silver lining. Yeah, and stuff right. And it's there sometimes, right? <laughs> and with the COVID thing, like I was telling people, I was telling you guys, we're back to the barbecues. We're back to the exactly. We're just showing up at some guy's place, you know. Because before it was these big shows, Rama, the Roundup, you know, going right. all over the place, right? It was. Other than that, what would we do? We'd get up, we'd go sit in the sun all day, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was it, those shows became more of a you got to see people and old friends you hadn't seen in a while. That right. was what it was more. You know, everybody you knew everybody's car, right? Right. But like with the COVID thing, all that stuff stopped. You yeah. Know? And it was like, you know, what the hell? You I know. know right? And, it, and that, that, that turned was a... into these backyard barbecue things, and it was just yeah. and it was close knit, yeah. right? I mean, it was. Mm-hmm a lot of like-minded people because right. at the show you get all different kinds of people and that's right. cool um but but it's nice to be around your people and yeah just it's chill nice out. to be yeah. around things you have that you're in common with as far as certain builds with cars and stuff yeah you know? and so sure. that was one good thing yeah well, and, and i think that that's gonna i think that that's gonna um because it's gonna keep going yeah i think you're gonna see more of that because there is nothing better I mean, I'm telling you, man, than me and Eddie rolling out of here at like mm-hmm. midnight in a in a Model A, you know, and it's 80 degrees at night. I mean, that's yeah, that's, exactly. Oh that's, my god! I, no. And and just when the sun's setting and there's oh, all those cars, man. and it's like like I was telling my dad, I was like, no wonder a lot of people showed up because there's been like because of COVID, there's been no car shows pretty yeah. much this year. So we said, hey, we're gonna have a car show and free beer and free tacos. People are like, okay, we'll come. <laughs> like, yeah. it's not that hard to get a lot of people to show up to that, you know. It yeah. was a good time, though. And it was weird because for this summer, there was actually more than I thought that there was going to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I look back on it, and I think, man, there wasn't that... It wasn't that bad. It, it wasn't yeah. that bad. Mm-mm. Yep. You know, I mean, you know, you got to kind of just make your own little... You know, a lot of, a lot of new little, you know, impromptu type mm-hmm. things, but, you know, it's uh, it wasn't, wasn't too bad. You know. Yeah, and I think that there's a lot of people who are trying to get more to, I think the same reason why a lot of people are listening to a lot of podcasts. They just some, want something that's real and just more homey, you know? Mm-hmm. And when yeah. we had this thing, you know, it's just like you're coming over to our house and, you know, mm-hmm. inviting you into our own shop versus where like a car show, it seems more of like a produced type thing, you know? Yeah. And, and one of my favorite car shows for that exact reason was, you ever go to the Portland Trans? Oh, that was my I never, favorite car you know, show. That was like the first one of the year, uh-huh. right? It's always yep. the first one. Early it's in, like the one yep. I never can get to. Yeah, which I, 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 I could probably have some stupid excuse. Always, yeah, you know. But that's the one. That and Hot Rodorama. Okay, I've uh, never been to Hot Rodorama. See, those either. those are the the two that I hear a lot about. Yeah, that I've never been to the Portland Trans is the coolest thing ever because there's no admission fees whatsoever. If you want to go to the car show, you drive your car there and you find somewhere to park on the street. And the car show, you're just walking 
around the streets of Portland. They don't shut anything down. It's nothing like that. You just park on the side of the street or some people are inside the parking lot of the Portland trains. And then the Portland trains gives you free hot dogs and soda and you just show up. And that's been going on for God knows how long, right? Yeah. I mean, so it's something like that after a certain length of time, it, it kind of, you know, some shows are like, especially with like the lot of what the slow pokes do, you know, they've been around for so long mm-hmm. that those, they, they, they carry such momentum. Yep. And I think that that's really cool to have something, you know, like, cause there's years where whoever puts that on, you know, I mean, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Right? You know, sometimes it's not every, it's not all, you know, fun and, yep. but it, the fact that it's got that longevity, yeah, that there's people like me that will say that's been going on forever. I've never been there, but I want to go. Right, I just got to get off my ass. Yep, I got you know and make it happen. Yep, but that and Hot Rodorama was one that I'd, I, and I think because of Hot Rodorama was because it was like, you know, before a lot of of the rat rod and stuff, the the culture really took off. Mm-hmm. Right, it was kind of the it was it was still more oh, underground. Exactly, yeah. in there, you know, there. What well, it just seems like it was just from what I, everybody I talked to it was everybody got along. Yeah, it was just like every it was just a good thing. And then I was talking to uh, Cody Adams explained it to me. He's like, because we're talking about how it ended, you know, I'm like, oh, it sucks. It ended because I wanted to go, and he goes, but it ended on top. Yep. It didn't go and go yep. until it got ran into the yep. ground. It ended on top, right? You know, but. You know, I'm looking forward to going to uh, Pendleton for okay. the hot rod. Yeah. Because, I mean, for me, going through the gorge. Yeah. Because we want to go up through the gorge. Yeah. And then come down 97. Of course, you know, it's going to be like a four-day four day four day deal. But I, I think it would be so bitching to, like, just get in my coop. And just a go. sleeping bag with a cooler. Yeah. And sleep and just sleep on the ground. See, that's I mean, what I... I want to find a lot more people that do hot rod cruises like that you know Mm kind of like like you you always see motorcycle guys doing it you know they travel in packs and they're on a road trip you know Mm -hmm. and i want to see a lot more of that with hot rods you know where it's not even so much as like a club necessarily but just a group of friends who they just get in their car and they just go on a road trip together you know Mm -hmm. i think that'd just be a blast yeah that's one thing that um like like i talk about it but then, like, when it's actually time to do it, I'm like, oh, I'm too old for this shit, right? You know, sleeping on the ground. Yeah. But, like, the the drags, like Riverdale. Yeah. The, have, you ever, have you guys ever done that? Uh-uh. And that, it's kind of like that, like, where it's real rustic. It's a real rustic track, you know, outlaw track. It's eighth mile. and uh, But they don't even have power out there. Right. There's a generator running a water pump for the burnout box. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that's and super old school. It is, like, but it, it's that way. Like, I'm I'm cruising down... You know, going over 205 bridge. I got my cooler here and sleeping bag in my in my spare tire. And you're going along, and then you pass Woodland, and then you see a couple more hot rod guys. And it it was one of those, you know, kind of like probably the early days of the of the, um, you know, March meetings and, and stuff like that down in Bakersfield. Like mm-hmm. because you just you do that. You your car's right there. You pray to God it's not going to rain. It, yeah, it's all like exactly. The, it's like the ash from and Mount St. Helens everywhere, right? right. So you and just throw the, your sleeping it's bag the out. Unknown too, because mm-hmm. because people will go, oh well, what if you break down? Yeah, that's a possibility, you oh, know. Yeah. But it's the it's part of the adventure, you know. If you break mm-hmm. down, you got to fix that thing on the side of the road, you know. And it's it's not all comfortable and just plush. It's part of the adventure, you know. Oh yeah, it's so cool. Like you know, you go there and there's you know, guys from Seattle come down and stuff, and like we uh. We uh, take this tiki bar. Mm-hmm. We take our own tiki bar up there, and we we uh, like take a bunch of alcohol and stuff, and and uh, and uh, it's it's funny because we had like a like a LED light. We'd always like stay away from everybody, right? Because there'd be like people there that actually like wanted to get up at like and go race their car, right? Not listen to our dumbasses <laughs> partying all night. Yeah, so like we'd kind of go off to the side, and yeah. it was like we'd wake up the next day, and, you know. I do I know you? Yeah, we hung out last night. <laughs> but it it was just it was a It's a blast. Yeah. I guess it was as close to some of the early you know, like like the guys that go to Mirage and the salt yeah. flats. Salt have you, flats have you like, been to Bonneville yet? Um I have haven't been in years. Oh my god, you gotta you, you should come with us this year. We, go, we go every like, year. 
I've, I've really been thinking. I, I was born in Salt Lake, so my parents, we'd always, we'd see like a streamliner cars from Salt yeah. Lake and stuff. We'd go over to, over to Wendover because my grandparents would always gamble and shit. Yep. I haven't been out there for years. Yeah, we, we go every year and we always get a spot at the KOA mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, with Jordan and Renee. So we always get a spot right next to them. And, uh, yeah, I've been every year, except every year since 2016, except for 2018, I was in basic training. So I missed that one. But yeah, it's a blast. That, that is actually that, 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 and, you know, a few other little things are on my list yeah. of things to do in just, cause like, as I started getting a little bit older, like I've got this and it, and it happens with people and it's, and it's scary is like, I don't. I'm scared to death that I'm going to look at the 10 projects, say 10 projects out in front of my shop and say, I'm going to live long enough to do six. Right. Right. I mean, that's a and, scary and everybody, thought. Like, everybody I never knows thought that. of that, right? Everybody uh-huh. knows that old guy, too, that is always there like, oh, I'm going to do that someday. And yeah. Like, so it's like, yeah, I want to experience things, go do things, not because there's plenty of summers where I just right. sat around and did nothing, right? Like right. I didn't want to go to a show or didn't want to do this. But like when we went over Thanksgiving, I've got family that lives in Sacramento. Mm-hmm. And uh, I love going to, I go down there a lot of times in the winter time. And down there, it's, you know, 60 degrees. And mm-hmm. it's, at least that's not raining, you know? And like I go to like the, the to, to the, you know, like vintage Ford and I go to Sacramento, SoCal, and a few other places. And I think, I mean, it'd be pretty cool to have my truck down here. Yeah. Right? So, like, you know, like, it was like it was, like, Saturday. Saturday night, like, 11 o'clock, I'm like, I want to drive my truck. Drive my truck to San Francisco. I'd love to drive my truck through Chinatown or drive it to the Golden Gate Bridge. You know, just do that. And once I, you know, turned 40, like, it was a big deal to to just make that shit happen. Mm Mm-hmm. Right, because I remember being young. I was like, I didn't care about my health. Mm-hmm. Like, who gives a shit? You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But now I'm, you know, I'm, it's, right. it's it, you know, and I've had older guys tell me, you know, you've got to get out there and do stuff, man. You've got yeah, to for just sure. make it happen. Don't be afraid to do this. Don't be afraid to do that, or, or you know, just make it happen. You know, so right, salt well, flats. That's one thing. It's like, and I'm always afraid that this shit's going to stop. I'm always afraid that the go- <laughs> that, that everybody's going to be like, "Oh, you can't do that." No, yeah, you can't. You, can't do you, that. you should know. really, you should really check out Bonneville though, because it's it's an absolute blast, and it's the most chill thing ever. And every night they, you know, have a car show down at the Nugget, and like it's the biggest car show you could ever imagine. You know, all the cars you see on TV and Instagram, and oh, you know, man, all, the from all over the world, they're all there. Cars, yeah. yeah, it's it's amazing. And then seeing all the cars race and just all the heritage that's there, it's just an absolute blast. And it's just super casual. You're just eating and just watching cars and drinking beer. You yeah. know, one of the, the like, because like you said, you see, you see stuff on social media, you, in the magazines and stuff. And I always was so envious of the Southern California where, you know, Salt Flats, where, where a lot of that shit started. Yeah. Right. And it's still yeah it's still there it's at the same place with the the same thing still going on right like it's unchanged it was like when i went to to bakersfield you know and seeing those cars and the way they did things and you know being able to to push start cars yeah you know doing the push starts and and, and stuff like that you know it's i'm always afraid that it, that that stuff's just going to go away seriously like the yeah. rules and regulations like yeah like, I heard they can't start cars up in the Grove now. Like, there's a certain time limit where they can light the light the, the nitro cars off now. You know, oh, it's seriously? Like it's, I was there in, like, 2006, 2012, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, now it's already changing. Mm-hmm. So, I got that, you know, yep. that paranoia, and whatever, you know. Especially with Bonneville, they're trying to say that all the salt issues, you know, with the, with the salt going away is the racing issue. Mm. But it's... The mining issue. I mean, See, I'm anybody always, with a brain can know that. Like when you got guys, you know, taking truckloads with a, you'll see a train just as long as you, as long as you can see, it's full of salt. But it's the people who are racing, who are in love with the salt flats that want to take care of it and want to keep doing it forever. Mm-hmm. That's the people who are causing the issues. It's yeah, like, I think you know. that, uh, you know, like, well, like I'm not like against like new technology or something, but like with all this electric car stuff. Right. right. It's like, you know, I kind of get, you know, I, 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 it's easy to be negative about hot rodding when it seems like the, 
there's always somebody trying to shut it down or whatnot. Yeah. You know? And we were talking with a bunch of guys like that. And I said, but you know what? Like, I took a frame and I took a body and I put it all together and I could still take it to the DMV and deal with all that fucking bullshit, right? <laughs> yeah. They and I'm driving do. it. I'm driving exactly. it down the road. But I, could, but I was able to still do that. So yep. it's not that bad. We can. Yep. But we need to cherish it. We need yep. to not sit on our ass and not go to Bonneville, right? We need right. to get up and go, it's a long fucking drive, and we're going to go do it. It's fucking <laughs> totally hot, agree. and yeah. it's bright out there, and, you know, there's never, you got to take a shit, and there's never one nearby, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but you got to go do that. Yeah. Right? Cause, and it's the, it's, the, it's the suffering that makes the good stories, you know? Because yeah. nobody, nobody ever tells a good story or has a good memory of when you went on a trip and everything was just plush and went well. But you have the good stories of like, yeah, my back hurt so bad from that freaking, you know, cot, oh, and the, you know, and it's just like, and the sun was so bright, I got so sunburnt, you know, and my car broke down, I had to fix it on. Those are the stories that when you look back on, those are the really good ones. And that's what a lot of the, the, the guys that are like 10 years older than me, you know, because they were, you know, they, they were my age. And they mm -hmm. don't want me to make some of the mistakes they made but you're right it's those so the first year we went to bakersfield my transmission went out going through shasta like we came up over through the border seeing the california welcome to california and the sun came out yeah right and then i mean there's like that uh i forget where it's at but there's like that metal dragon thing right you pass by when you go through i5 i'm thinking man i'm in california this is awesome yeah. sun's yeah. out right you know it's cool and then transmission starts slipping and i'm like shit this is not good but I got, we got it to Redding. We tried everything, trying to figure out what's going on. And uh, I have relatives in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to limp this thing to Sacramento. We're going to stuff it in their garage. We're gonna, I'm going to jump in with somebody else, and we're going to blast down to Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. Right? And, you know, it, it was just that trip. Like yep. you said, it was the breaking yeah, down, like leaving my truck there, jumping in with somebody else, and, and going down to Bakersfield. And we got there. It was like 22 hours, because I broke down and dealing with all that, that we slept in the dirt. We slept on the ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. of, and like, so we get there, and it's the middle of the night, right? Mm -hmm. We got a little bit lost. And there's like a security guy on this, you know, driving around. He got like the cushiest job in the world. It's like three o'clock in the morning. Around on the golf cart. <laughs> you know, he was driving around and he starts drinking with us. Right. Nice. He's drinking and stuff. And I remember waking up and everybody's in line to get in. Oh. And I look over at my buddy and I, I, I look over like this and he's got floor mats. Like I actually had an air mat. <laughs> See, he's like, laying I, like, on I, floor mats. He's laying on his floor mats and he lifts up his head and he just shakes it. <laughs> right? Yeah. And then. And another great story, you know, you got a good story when you know you, you couldn't have made it up, mm -hmm, right? right? It's like so good. You're like, I don't, that, that can't be a shit story. Mm -hmm. You can't make that shit up. Yeah. So we go to this outback. We actually eat like a good meal, uh -huh. right? Like we're, it's like the last night we're there. We're at this outback, right? And we're getting like steak dinners. And we're actually sitting on like comfortable shit, right? Because we living in our cars, you know, almost it seemed like. And you know, when you leave... Like a steakhouse, there's like a guy holds the door, you know, thank you for coming in, right? Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And uh, there's like these four guys stumbling in front of us. And the guy like opened the door and he's like kind of talking to them. Like I thought maybe their their food got messed up and this guy was like trying to make sure, you know, everything was good. Wait, and is this the, I, yeah. I think you, I think yeah. I heard this is so, the good one. I don't, yeah. And uh, so we're walking out there, right? And these guys are stumbling and it's like, still like, it's like five o'clock in the day it's not right? so these late. guys yeah. have been day drinking like all day long right and uh this guy turns around and he goes he goes hey mate let me tell you right now the outback is nothing like where we're from i mean it was the australians <laughs> i was like what are the fucking odds of walking out oh of the outback God. and having these australians tell me they're like and i know now i know what it was they're probably in there like you know this ain't how you do that. You know, and this guy's right. like, well, we're trying to best, sir. You know? <laughs> yeah. But, oh, man, I just laugh. That's laugh. hilarious. Laugh that's funny. Ass. But that's, a, you know, that's, yeah. the memory's made. You See, know? when we went to Bonneville this last time, we ended up renting a truck. Because right before we were going to go, my dad's F-350, you know, took a shit. So we're like, oh, man, we're going to have to rent a truck and so we ended up towing my f100 down which i wish i would have driven it but it definitely wasn't ready to drive mm. down there you know but we towed it and that poor little truck was just 
working so hard to haul all of our stuff and my truck on this giant car trailer. And I remember we're getting super stoked because it pops up on the GPS like 12 miles to Wendover. And we're like, hell yeah, it is Bonneville time. We're 12 miles away. This is awesome. Woo! Ding! The fuel light goes on. My dad's like, "Uh uh-oh, that's not good. (laughs) 15 miles to empty. And we got 12 miles to Wendover. (laughs) We're like... Oh no! And so then, <laughs> the pretty, soon, not add up. <laughs> pretty soon, it just says low, and it doesn't even register how many miles we have. It just says we're low, and we're like, "Come on, let's go!" And I was like, "Well, worst comes to worst, Dad, we'll just take my F one hundred off the back of the trailer, drive into Wendover, and then come yeah. back." And we ended up. It was like a. 25 gallon tank or something we ended up putting like 24.5 gallons in that truck it was so close and it's not even like we're like oh we don't need to stop for gas i mean you're in the middle of nowhere so much that it's like we went from one gas station to the other and almost ran out of gas and so next year we were saying like if we ever haul a trailer again we're gonna need to carry some extra gas with us man yeah we uh we were going to uh jake the alligator man show up in long beach washington and we went to uh we were up in uh, Portland at a benefit for a, for a girl that gotten, she'd gotten in a bad wreck mm-hmm. and uh, like a lot of the car clubs got together and did like a benefit thing. A band's played and, and we stopped by there and we didn't get out of that party till like 1130 or midnight. And then we went through like up highway 30 through Scapoose and all that going to Astoria and then going over to Long Beach while well, the gas stations were closed. Right, and I, I was like, "Oh shit, no!" Fuck, I thought they'd be open. I, right. Anyways, we're going over that long ass bridge. Yeah. Right in Astoria, and I'm like, "We're gonna, we are going to run out of gas." On the like, Astoria. You know, the guy bridge. next to me is like, he's like, "Oh fuck, dude, he's never <laughs> the, been on that." The bridge. three mile long bridge. Yeah, it was at <laughs> night, right? So you can't see land. You know, you're just like, "Fuck," you know. And we, uh, so we, I didn't really. I, I was in like, took it upon myself to get a sleeping arrangements. Cause mm-hmm. it's like one thirty, two in the morning. And, uh, like I got, I called up this campground like a couple of days ago. I'm like, yeah, we, you guys got like tent camping spots. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, yeah, you can do that. Well, so we come in with our hot rods, like in the middle of the night, like it's gravel, <laughs> yeah. right? We're sleeping on gravel, mm-hmm. right? We wake up, anyways, wake up the next morning. I'm like, I got to get gas, right? Yeah. Somebody's got to take me. I can't even, I don't even dare drive it. And I looked in the bottom of my gas tank with a flashlight and you could see like high areas where it was dry. <laughs> so like either the rest of it <laughs> yeah. evaporated overnight, yeah. but you know, we got, man, and that was, uh, so that was that same trip that uh, we needed ice for our drinks. Uh huh. It's it's kind of ironic because where they have the Jake the Alligator Man thing, it's like right next to the police station. Okay. But I think the cops are cool. They're yeah, like, they're okay, like, you right, fuckers are all yeah. right there. I know where you're <laughs> yeah. at. You know, like we'll just corral you guys. Yeah. You know, or when you get out of my town, I don't care what you do. But we would uh, take Walmart bags. We needed ice. So we'd go to the hotels. <laughs> oh, and fill it up <laughs> we'd from fill the ice. Up our, you know, and, <laughs> oh, man. Just, you know, but you're right. It's like a lot of those. Yeah. Uh, those uh you know really good memories that are made yeah, well that's like bonneville one year it seems like every year there's a giant storm mm. and we sleep outside we don't even sleep in tents so we just well the wind out there gets pretty bad. Yeah, yeah so we'll that's what yeah wind we haven't had rain luckily but wind storms and thunderstorms totally every year something happens and so we'll just pop up our cot out there you know and man, pretty soon the wind will start blowing, and then the girls they'll be in the tent, and it's like Dorothy is about to <laughs> blow away in the tent, you know. <laughs> and then I woke up and I had a pile of sand like all over my sleeping bag, you know, and like wiping sand out of my eyes, and like sand is all in my hair, because the KOA it's just you know it's a camping site, it's just a sand pit mm-hmm. is all it is, you know. But yeah, yeah, I think that uh, like like you like you said, you know, you get you look. You know, you're nervous about going and doing whatever, but when you, when it's all said and done and you get home, you know, and you're going through your phone, you know, you're checking out pictures and mm-hmm. you met a lot of people. And that's, that, I mean, that's the biggest thing is like, is like how many people I've met just in the last, like, see, you know, 10 years. I mean, that's a long time, but the, mm-hmm. it's just so cool. Yeah. You know? It's and super that's what's, cool. Well, that's like, like you, you know, like I would never would have met you if you didn't come over to the party, you know? And that's, what's crazy to me is all the people that showed up that were just local people. I'm like, how have I never known all these people? It's crazy. How did we not cross paths? Right. I mean, Uh yeah, you know, cause I I found out about it 
like um, you know somebody share whatever you know mm-hmm. I'm like oh that'd be, that'd be cool nice drive you know like a nice mm-hmm. drive not too far away you know like there's you know and it was awesome yeah you know, and, and the cool thing is is that that's the biggest place when you can actually meet people is those events mm-hmm. and i've even had it to where i'm way far away somewhere you know and they're like oh yeah we're from oregon i'm like what part of oregon oh we're from dayton i'm like Bro, I'm from McMinnville. Like, <laughs> we lived yeah. all, you know, like in Bonneville, it's happened. It's like, we're all the way in Utah, and we've been neighbors this whole time, and I never knew you. Yeah. Yeah, we were, we were down in, uh, yeah, we were down in uh, Bakersfield that one time, and there was, you know, guys, they, the, I forget who they are. I don't know, it's, I don't think it's a club or anything, but these guys put on a car, like a Wednesday night cruising thing at, mm-hmm. in Shed, which is like this little town, like you blink and you're through it, you know? Yeah. And they were down there. Like, I, you know, I see Oregon, but where are you? Oh, it's those guys from Shed. They're like just by yeah. Albany. Yeah. You know, so it's, it, but it, it's, it, you know, it's almost disappointing if that's the only place you see those guys. It's like, right. okay, instead of seeing each other, you know, 500 miles away from here, you know, we need to have those guys over for Exactly. Park, right. You know, it's kind of like your deal. That's what was so nice about that. It was like, we're going back to the roots, you know, we don't mm-hmm. got to go to like some show in Portland, you know, right. or something right. like that, you know, and, uh, cause I kind of got it, it for one, it takes a lot of work to put on like shows like Rustorama. Like, oh, totally. Yeah. I mean, Even I, just my little event, I have so much more respect. Exactly. For we were shows, just talking you know? about how yeah. much that is. And then like, I remember I working the gate at Rustorama. That was one of my jobs, when I, you know, working the gate, you know, like, okay, this, you know, cause there are certain rules, you know, wheel rules and, you know, billet, you know, car rules. Right. Mm-hmm. And there was, it was always, it was, that was a hard job to do. Mm-hmm. And I remember one year there was guys helping me and like, I, I came off like an asshole. Right. You know? And they're like, Whoa. And I'm like, this is just how it's gotta be. And I remember it being like the worst job. It's yeah, like, man, seriously. the worst thing. It's like, I mean, I understand, you know, like you got rules. Yeah. Right. And you try to get those rules out there so everybody knows them. But there's always like an exception mm-hmm. that I that that I that I have in my head. Yeah. Not that everybody has. Yeah. When you when you're your cap sixty five and they're like, well, it's a sixty six. You're like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know or, what I mean? You know, like a sixty four Nova. You yeah. Know, and it's a sixty five. You know, okay. They're fucking the same body style. Right? Yeah. And it's got backup lights in the deck. Bit, right. But, but like. I'd see five guys one time, like five guys came over from Bend or something. Mm-hmm. And the fourth guy had the wrong wheels. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah. it's like, you know, working the gate. I, so I get it. Being because the, it's like, that, that guy drove. if you want to have like a trend of an event, you know, where it's like, this is the style of like, if you want to have like a traditional hot rod event, I get it. You know, totally. Yeah. It, but, it, but I mean, you really got to advertise as it, advertise it as that. And for us, you know, we really just wanted something where just classic car people could just kind of mm-hmm. get together. And, and I out. think it needs to go. I think a lot of, I think back in the day, there wasn't all these rules. Right. Right. I mean, from when I, like, I, I like, you know, I, I mean, I just, you know, I was always into like street racing. Yeah. Stuff like that. Right. So, I mean, what's rules to have? I mean, there's, you know, whatever. But it, it seemed like a lot of that stuff took, took a lot of the fun out of it because, I'm judging people on their cars, not their character. That bugged me. Mm-hmm. But again, it's this is what it is. This is what the flyer says. Don't show up with a 73 Nova. And you're not going to yeah. get it. But it, 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 it's hard putting on those kind of shows. I mean, that's what I'm saying is like, you know, the amount of work that it takes to put those on and deal with all that stuff. You got all this, you know, sh- like bullshit. It's like, I think everybody kind of got burned out on that, and it was like the bar. Well, like I, I said, like the, the backyard barbecue. A lot of man. the Cherry City bombers had quit right after that one ruster. The last, the last one, which was last year. I know a lot of them had quit, and I think it had a lot to do with Rusto Rama. It's hard on everybody, man. Yeah. It is so hard on everybody. There's so much. I remember we would. So, I think the roundup was like the first show. Of the the big show of the summer, then Rust the Rama was in Rose July. City Roundup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember, like, after we got done with Rust Rama, everybody was like, everybody took a big sigh of relief, right? Because there was so much planning and so much work that a lot of people, you know, I think the people that put on the shows and the people that went to them and everything, it just kind of got, I don't know, it, it, it just, uh, 
it was hard on a lot of people. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. It's just a lot of work that it takes to put that shit on, you know. Yep. And uh, it's so nice to just show up and pay your twenty dollars and get your free shirt and and, and yep. have something to go do. But I want people to uh, realize that there's a lot of hard work behind right. the scenes. That and see, that's what that's what we that. really strive for the most with our event was just making sure that it was hundred percent. Our biggest goal was we're never going to charge anybody or mm-hmm. anything like that. And we always just wanted it to feel like you were just one of our friends that got invited to our barbecue. Even, yeah. if, even if we didn't know you, you know, it mm-hmm. was just like one of our friends had just got invited to a barbecue and you could just come hang out, bring yeah. your car and just I really relax. like just miss the day when you could like, like have a, all kinds of different cars. There wasn't all this. Yeah. I mean, I, just because I don't agree with how somebody built something. I mean, if something's, you know. You know, I've been known to shoot my mouth off and run it, you know. <laughs> yeah. But I, I do try to be respectful. Right. Um, but just to be where you could just be, and everybody just got along. Yeah. You know, I mean, just, I don't know. I don't know why it has to be all drama, you know. But I, I, I think this year, I think, you know, with the barbecue things and the little shows like yours starting mm-hmm. and. Like, you guys will have to come out to that covered bridge thing. Yeah, I've been wanting and, to come out there for a couple and, times, uh, but it's just... You know, and I remember this year I did it, and I was like, "What? hope I remember the route. I got, like, yeah. 12 guys behind me. I yeah. get lost, you know, but it looked little like stuff a fun like time, that. Man. You know, I think it, How long have we been going for? We're at an hour and almost 10 minutes. Oh, dang. Yeah. Well, Jeez. it's usually about when we try to cap it off but i mean yeah. it's been great talking to you yeah, that's what I, that's what always happens we always get in the flow <laughs> and time just disappears you know that's good though yeah that's yeah. how you know you, that's how it for hit, sure you know, time flies you yeah fun. and we'll have to have you on again sometime yeah. oh yeah definitely. There's, a, there's always so much to talk about you know oh, so man. that's a cool yeah. thing is like i told garrison you know with all my friends and people that we know it's like we're gonna have endless guests so oh yeah it's been super cool oh yeah you get a lot of good people you know, and, and bounce ideas off and networking. Yep. I mean, I, I think that's the biggest, most positive thing. And, and there's so many, so many good people out there to bounce ideas off totally. of. Totally. I do it all the time. Yep. Well, thank you very much for coming on. It was a blast. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh-huh. It's been awesome. Mm-hmm.